I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with the power of the dog supervising sound editor Robert McKenzie. Uh, now you've done uh, sound for a number of action heavy films in the past. Uh, how different are the considerations for a film like this that contains a lot of subtle, quiet, nuanced moments? Um, well, I mean, that's true. I have. I, I've done um, both, really. I mean, we're, we're filmmakers, so we serve the director and, and serve the story uh, in whatever form that takes, be it action or drama or comedy. Um, so it's almost like the same rules apply. Uh, I made the analogy the other day, you know, but the difference between Hacksaw Ridge and, and the power of the dog in in Hacksaw Ridge, we had bombs and um, and bullets. Uh, in the power of the dog, we have footsteps and wind. They're all tools um, to serve the story and, and and serve the characters, the landscape and the drama. Uh, and and you know, what kind of uh, research or preparation did you do to kind of develop an authentic sense of this 1920s Montana ranch? Well, good question, because we're obviously in um, the Southern Hemisphere. Um, Dave Whitehead, the sound designer, was in New Zealand. We were all in Sydney. Um, I mean, we've been to Montana, but um, we don't live there. We don't have that, uh, that boots on the ground knowledge of the seasons. Um, but um, we, we contacted local sound recordists uh, in the area. Um, and talk to them and and you know used their resources uh and their sounds um because as a sound community it's a great sort of collective of people um and we always share files and and hit each other up so yeah we we we, we drew heavily on that because of covid we couldn't travel to montana as well so yeah uh and you know uh the film takes place both you know, inside this ominous feeling uh, ranch uh, and also, you know, in these outdoor uh, vistas and, and, and scenic locations, uh, you know, what are the different, uh, you know, considerations that go into like those exterior sounds versus uh, what's happening like indoors? Well, especially working with, with, with Jane, I mean, on any film, but especially with Jane, um, everything is story and character focused so the you brought up the, the house for example um you know it's a it's a it's a big house in the in in the middle of, of a ranch in montana um and phil's parents phil and george's parents have have left they've they've moved to the city and taken the furniture and and so it's a very sparsely furnished dark, oppressive. It's a metaphor for Phil's personality, I guess. Um, so with the sound, we tried to reflect that by making it, um, you know, drafty and creaky and oppressive sounding. Um, so, you know, we, 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 use, we, we use those environments. Also the, the, the expanse of Montana, um, that, 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 you know, that, that's, we juxtapose the in, the interior um, character traits, you know, close footsteps, close um, comb from from Peter, the the swoosh of the jeans. We juxtapose that with the wide expanse of the landscape. Uh, and you know, as you mentioned, you're working with the director Jane Campion, uh, who you've worked mm -hmm. with before on uh, Top of the Lake. Uh, but what, what's the collaboration like with her as a filmmaker? Um, well, it's exactly that. It's a collaboration. Um, she's as interested in sound as she is in any other facet of filmmaking. So, you know, we sit together and go through um, ideas and sounds and we're always, you know, we're always mixing, we're always editing, we're always serving the story um, right from early days of picture editing. Um, we would sit together and have conversations and come up with sounds and experiment. Um, and, and Jane's the sort of collaborator that isn't afraid to throw away great ideas that you may have come up with. You know, you might go down a path for several weeks or several days um, and then, you know, okay, that's, um, let's try something else, you know, okay, 
put that away, start again. Um, the, and I think that's the nature of true collaboration where you can work together as colleagues, friends, um, yeah, uh, true collaborators. It, yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, life-changing experience. You know, it's what, working with Jane is what you think you're going to get into when you get into filmmaking. It's not um, always the case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, in addition to, uh, you know, your part of the soundscape, there's also that Johnny Greenwood score. Uh, like, how does right. that come into play when you're creating kind of sounds, you know, as part of that soundscape? Well, I mean, you know, imagine me, you know, getting to work with Jane. And, oh, by the way, Johnny Greenwood's doing the score. Like, it's crazy. Um, I'm such a, a fan, um, but, you know, putting that aside, um, uh, Jane was working with Johnny early on. Um, and I think, you know, I, I could be corrected on this, but I think they, they, Johnny wrote the music before seeing any of the film. So it was based on conversations that they'd had. Um, and a lot, I find a lot of, you know, great work that comes um, with filmmaking comes from conversations with, um, with the director. You know, you just might be chatting about something else, not necessarily the film, but then you learn to understand their sensibilities and, you know, you collaborate and, and your sensibilities combine. Um, I digress, but I think that's how the score was, um, was created and so we had the score to work with very early on in the process um almost from i think the first time i saw the film johnny's music was in it so it was already part of the fabric it was for me it was the the colors it was the it was the, the it was the tone palette if you have the you know the color palette johnny's score was the tone palette so it was an amazing stepping off point and we worked our sound in and around it um the other amazing thing about johnny's score is it's sort of simplicity in the way that it was meant to be it's it's sparsely orchestrated you might just have a a cello and a couple of violas or you know one viola and a violin <clears throat> And it it sits on the screen like it was meant to be. Uh, there's not, you know, big um, orchestra behind it or anything like that. Um, and it it really allowed, I think, it allowed our sound to almost be the the backing to the score. And it really it was a sort of hand in glove fit. Uh, and this being a Netflix film, uh, like I'm wondering, you know, if there are certain factors that go into your work, uh, like whether you're considering a theatrical exhibition or whether people will be watching and hearing it uh, at, at home or in various different uh, formats. Yeah, I mean, great question. Um, I think a lot about that. Um, and, you know, in the past, I've really sort of obsessed about that. You know, do you worry that people at home are going to have the dishwasher on or the kids in the background or, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you might, you might overcompensate for that, you know, and think that you might need to be more bombastic or whatever. Um, but these days, I, I, well, when I get in the chair to, to sit down and mix, I think I try and put all of, all of that aside and serve the story, serve the, director and serve the characters. And certainly in the case of The Power of the Dog, I did not for one moment consider the difference between theatrical and home. We'd never had those conversations. Um, and I think that was the right way to go. Um, you know, I've had a, a few comments from people that, that I think that's resonating with people, the, 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 the subtlety, the simplicity, the detail, I think it comes through, regardless of whether it's theatrical or um, or at home. Uh, regardless, 
of the setup that you might have at home. Um, and I think that was a, that's been a huge eye opener for me. Um, but yeah, we didn't really have those conversations. Um, you know, to to borrow from uh, a hero of mine, Skip Leavesay, um, I think he he said when they were mixing um, No Country for Old Men, and there's that really quiet scene um, with the the light bulb downstairs, and you know it's it's very quiet. And, you know, I think they had those conversations in the mix about, well, you know, when it plays back here, you're not going to hear that. And the director said, well, then the scene doesn't work. So it doesn't matter. We need to mix it so it works. And um, I think The Power of the Dog is a good example of the audience is listening. You might not think they are, but, you know, they, they must be. Yeah, definitely. This film, <clears throat> it definitely is a film that trusts its audience to kind of lean into it. Uh, and I think it does mm -hmm. have that uh, you know, effect that really does draw you into the detail. Right. And, and that's really heartening to hear because you do worry about that, you know, that stuff when you're mixing. Um, I internalize it. I wouldn't say that to, to Jane. You know, I just want to bring her, her film to the world. Um, so I guess subconsciously I make those compensations. But uh, yeah, we certainly didn't verbalize it and um, we lent into that. And yeah, and consequently the audience is leaning into the, into the soundtrack. So that's great. Uh, and you know, do you have a particular moment or element or, or scene in the film that you're especially proud of, of how the sound uh, creates an effect in it? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd have to say, um, well, uh, it's the it's the piano banjo jewel, and I wasn't aware of that. You know, if you'd asked me this question when we were mixing, I would have had a different answer. But um, I recently saw the film with an audience um, in a theatre, and that scene just stood out. It, it made me realise, you know, Jane's a true director, right? So she directs me as much as she directs anyone else, and when we got to that scene in the screening, I, you know, a light bulb went off in my head. I realized, oh, this is what we've been, you know, working towards. Um, all of the tension, all of the drama that we'd established with Phil's boots and spurs and whistling, all of that op oppression and tension was leading to that, um, that moment of the duel. Um, so even though it's it, it it wasn't you know the the heavy lifting sound wise is is music um it's the scene that uh, resonates most with me and that i'm most proud of in the way that we um eventually mixed it and and brought it to the to the world uh, and you know, this film is in the awards conversation, has been getting great reviews. Uh, you've been in the conversation before, you won uh, the Oscar for uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, mm -hmm. what, was, what was that like to get that sort of recognition? Uh, like, what did it mean for you uh, just, you know, as, a, as an artist working on, on film? Well, it, it, it changed my life. Um, you know, I was told at the time, you know, that it was going to change my life and I, I was, not cynical, but I, 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 I was ignorant. Um, it, it, it really did get, knowing that, um, that people cared that much about what we do and that it, it resonates with an audience as much as it does, um, has meant the world to me and yeah, um, changed my life. So, um, yeah, getting this opportunity again to to talk to you and and everybody else is um, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, and you know, when you're you know watching a film sort of as an audience member, uh, are there certain things in in sound design that like you tend to notice that stand out to you that that you're most looking for or excited by? Um, I mean, yes. Um, you know, I, I recently saw June and was blown away. I mean, I'm inspired by everything that I see. It's, um, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, everything that I, everything that I watch, um, 
is is inspiration. Um, but when you when you get when you get in the chair to work on on your own projects or work on a on a project for a director, um, I tend to put all of that aside and just serve the story um, and and serve the current project at hand. And all of all of those inspirations disappear, and you try and find the unique sound for the project that you're currently working on. Well, I want to congratulate you on your work on this film, um, and you know all the work you've done in the past, all the work I'm sure you will do in the future. Uh, it's it's been such a pleasure talking with you. Thanks, Daniel. 